I've been on the road for over two years, driving 70,000 miles through nine different states. And this is my story about the things I've seen, memories I've shared, and places I've called home. I think I've underestimated what it takes to make a film. Oh God. First, you gotta get some cool shots. But I don't want a montage of just places I've been. I wanna tell a story. And with storytelling, it needs to be cohesive. You can't just have a scene in the winter and magically teleport into Arizona summer because this isn't a sci-fi. So making a film should be pretty easy, but there's this thing called life. Between work, living on the road, and just having a social life, I've realized I've only been shooting highlights and I don't have a story to tell. Ask me anything road life related. What's a typical day in my life look like? Well, it's just kind of like living at home. It's still strange to me that I call this my house, but it does have a roof, a bed, and a place to cook. I moved around a lot when I was growing up as a kid, born in San Diego, lived in the Bay Area for seven years, and came back down to San Diego for middle school throughout college. My parents were separated, and home was never under one roof. Change was a constant. So calling this vehicle my house isn't too far-fetched. It's a place of comfort, and also a place of constant change.
what made you get into road life? Well, maybe it was <laughs> kind of like everything, you know? Yeah. I think a lot of people who live on the road are looking for something, looking to forget the past, run away from their problems, and just to find themselves. It's been five years since I felt so lost, so without a plan, so distrusting of my own past. I'll keep this brief, but I thought success was in how others perceived you, measured by how much money you made, the type of car you drove, and the family you raised. To distract myself from all that, I took up photography. And for a year straight, I chased sunsets, searched for new places to photograph, and slowly discovered how much of life I had been missing out on. This rush of finding myself turned into an obsession. An obsession that made me sell most of my things, put the rest in storage, and do whatever it took to see the world. For six months in 2019, I traveled to Australia and New Zealand. So, woke up and drove a couple hours to go catch a sunrise here. So, I'm at Tessellated Rock. So I got some brekkie going, got my camera out here, got the heater running, and lined up for the perfect shot. I traveled with a few bags, some rental cars, and even had a taste of van life. This is my home. Uh, this is on the wrong side. It's got a couch and a desk and got another bed up top. It's actually a two bedroom. Pretty sweet in here. I forgot to mention, I did this all while working remotely. If I wasn't on a hike or taking pictures, I was working. Sometimes in the van, sometimes in a coffee shop, sometimes I was shooting and working. A friend once told me, the best experiences come from going out of your comfort zone. And I think being so far away from what I was used to and the freedom to try new things really solidified that. I guess that's why I love the road so much. How do I earn a living? Well, it's 2022. All I need is my laptop and some internet. I've been working as a software engineer for about eight years now, and of those eight years, five of them have been working remotely. I have coworkers I talk to every day, the occasional meetings, and work during usual business hours. I have enough power to last me an entire work week, and between tethering off my cell phone's data plans and having Starlink internet, the only difference between me working at home and on the road is just the view outside my office window. Yeah, so the basically the UI component of it wasn't. Um. So. One of the benefits of living on the road is minimizing travel time. I don't have to waste time going back home. And the best part, if the weather sucks, I can just wait it out. Anyways, back to Wyoming.
Not really. I've learned to enjoy my own company for extended periods of time, but I always meet up with friends on the road. My house in Budapest, my, my hidden treasure chest, golden grand piano, my beautiful Castillo, you, ooh, you, ooh, I leave it all. My acres of a land, by the cheese, it may be hard for you to stop and believe, but for you, ooh, you, ooh, I leave it all. Over you, ooh, you, ooh, I leave it all. Settling down. I hate that phrase. I'll admit, living on the road is a hassle. Trivial things such as doing laundry and taking a shower become a ritual rather than an afterthought. Resources that I used to take for granted, like power and water consumption, are now things that I need to keep track of. But the opportunities are limitless. Like the freedom to explore places. When I was living in an apartment, I had to carefully plan those weekend trips and vacations, selectively choosing the destinations I wanted to visit. But with road life, you don't have to prioritize. You just visit places as they come with no real timeline. In fact, my favorite places have been small towns that I would have never dreamed of visiting. However, the thing that really keeps me on the road are the friends I've made, building a network of friendships spanning thousands of miles, sharing common interests. <laughs> it's Howard! Cheers. Cheers. I've mentioned this before, but even though I travel alone, I'm always running into friends and making new ones. Settling down. It's a misconception that road life is a phase that you will grow up from. I know my life will eventually evolve. Maybe it's buying a van, or a camper, or even a boat. Maybe it's buying land in many different states. But I know one thing is for sure. This nomadic lifestyle is one I'll continue for a long time. <laughs>